As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be. Oh man, it's eight o'clock. And so that'll make it a. I don't need the spotlight. I shine just fine. Hi, I'm Karma, and yes, I am a bitch. Brav Bros. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Brav Bros, your favorite podcast from the bros for everybody. For whoever wants to listen, I am your co-host, Steel Russell, joined as always by the one and only, the classic Shooter Magooter. What's up, dude? Why am I the classic? Because I don't have a funny name because I'm poop. Oh, 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 oh. So You're just classic. saying it's cla- I thought you were calling me the classic. No, that, no. I mean, the I'll classic. Take that. I know it's actually a pretty good compliment. I'm not calling you that, so don't take it. It's definitely like some uh, some old NBA players that they refer to as ah uh, the classic. Yeah, you know, classic Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> not, not like that. <laughs> and then some guy who's just got really good fundamentals. It's like there's the classic out there. Look at him go. Ah, uh, that's me. Birkin, Corkmaz, <laughs> Birkin. <laughs> <laughs> oh god nobody's gonna get that nope, one um, unless you're a weird sixers fan. yep nope uh yeah we've got a uh <laughs> we've got a packed week for you here we sure do uh we should we tell the people what we've got at the end of the week yeah let's just fill them in yeah let's just fill them in on what's going on here so we've got a classic week going on for you right now classic uh, rose week <laughs> we're gonna start off with summer house today i know steel has got a lot of thoughts about what happened that was one of the Tougher episodes to watch and to really get upset. through. Even yeah. for me, I it's just not enjoyable, and we will let you know how we feel about the entire episode as we move forward. But the rest of the week, you know, we're we're out of reunion week. Miami's over. Beverly Hills is over. So we need to get into the, we need to get into the new shows. Unfortunately, as it might be, and I know a lot of people are excited about that. But we will have a Valley recap for you, as well as VPR, of course. And then Wednesday night, we get to have the pleasure of interviewing a newcomer. West. Yeah, I'm we actually are, I'm really yeah. excited for this one. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think uh everybody likes him, which is good, and everybody's going to want to listen to what he has to say. So we're going to be doing that Wednesday night and we'll get that out to you by the end of the week. Yeah, so we're really excited about the interview. We're excited about I'm weirdly excited about the Valley not because I my stance hasn't changed. I don't think it's going to be good now. I appreciate the fact that whatever the fuck they're doing has worked because people are talking about it. People are now saying like I'm actually kind of excited. I read the comments, so like this whole sham, the charade that's been going on between Jax and Brittany, somehow it, it moved the needle. So people are excited yes. to watch it. I don't know how. I don't that's know why. But like You watched the trailer. I watched the trailer. The trailer I, was good. Trailer yeah, was see, good. I, I just didn't get excited about the trailer. And now there's there's uh, news breaking that one of the other couples that's on the show that we don't know yet, they're breaking up. They're breaking up after Already. a year. How about you hold that information at least until halfway through the season? Because they're trying to drum up I guess, yeah. Maybe they know. Like, let's play. Let's play a fun game of just maybe. Just maybe. Just maybe like with that. the bros. Let's, let's, okay? let's pull this one out more just often. Maybe I do like this. This yeah. is like the what if version, like the yeah. Marvel what ifs. But just maybe. I already lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I went to go take a sip, and I'm like, oh yeah, okay, this is gonna let be. Me, let me sip on a little bubbly while I fill you in. No, um, just maybe they know that episode one is actually good, and they were afraid that. This is a big just maybe, but they were afraid that people wouldn't watch it because of Jax, maybe the negative press that it was getting or the lack of press that it was getting. And maybe they're really confident with this this first episode, this premiere, and they're like, hey, let's just throw a bunch of shit against the wall and make people watch the first one because after that, they might be hooked. That's a possibility. I don't think that's what's I don't understand. Like, the news breaking about a different couple that we don't know breaking up before we even get to know them, like, it just doesn't matter to me. It's like, oh, wow. This show is going to be awful. That's as Im- how I feel. That's as impactful to me as if you walked in at my house and told me that two people you work with that dated broke up. Exactly. I'd be like, I don't care. Uh, you don't care. <laughs> and the worst part is there's not going to be a reality TV about my work because, that, well, that would actually be awful. Um, but yeah, so we will get into that eventually. We do have to tackle Summer House, which so far, I mean, you can, obviously, Carl and Lindsay are such a huge focal point, but so far this season it is pretty enjoyable because the rest of the house is getting along really well. Yeah. And they're not letting the Carl and Lindsay of it all really bring them down. Even when they're decompressing and debriefing from what happened the night before, they're still kind of moving on with their lives and doing their own thing, which is such a vast change from last year 
where they were allowing Lindsay and Carl, mostly Lindsay, to bog down everybody else in the house. And then it just wasn't fun for us to watch. And we were really bored because they weren't doing anything to begin with. They found a good crew here with bringing in West and Jesse. And I feel like that has reinvigorated the whole house. I feel like it's really important, and this is actually the only positive I'm going to say about Lindsay this whole season. It's not even really a positive. It was just she got lucky. The dude energy in the house, like you were just saying, it's it's really important because the girls are solidified. It's been the same general crew for the most part for, you know, three, four seasons. They've tried to insert a couple here and there, but for the most part, the core's been the same. The dudes have been a revolving door. Last Mm -hmm. year, we didn't even have that many dudes, and the ones that we did have, one of them didn't talk. And the other one was painfully awkward. Chris actually grew on me towards I the end of the season. I liked Chris. I didn't mind Chris. I thought he was even good for TV because he was that awkward. I agree. I agree with that. But I feel like when you get that, like, just that bro down camaraderie that you're getting with West and Jesse, it's just fun to watch. It's two idiots that, like, they just like to hang out. They're, you know, that's it's kind of like me and Shooter back in our, you know, Fun prime? times. Yeah, back in our prime, before our 30s, we got boring or whatever. Classic steal and shooter. Classic steal and shoots, but <laughs> that's the name of the episode today, Classic Bros. But no, it does. It just brings like a different element to the house, and it's just more fun. The best thing you said was they are not letting the Lindsay Carl shit drag the rest of them down, because we had that last year. Yep. They've and done a good more job. More than anything, right? they're going out. Yes. That's huge. Yeah. And look, I, we're still going to be pissed off that we can't get to see them while they're out, But when I really do think about it, everything gets so confusing when they are out and there's a huge bar scene or something that the cameras don't really know who to go after with the audio and everything else. So we never really get a whole lot as it is. I'm good with the lead up and the aftermath so far. I am too. And I'm actually liking the like cut scenes of just like five of them. Like it's a quick like and you get somebody dancing. Somebody's doing a shot. Somebody's dancing. Somebody's doing a shot. Back to the house. And you know some shit's about to pop off. You're like, oh no. Why are we back home so early? Whenever we get two people leaving there and usually it's a couple whenever two of them are leaving by themselves something happens yeah and we'll get into it shortly but i did i wrote it down here the fact that carl walks in the door shuts the door from the bar and then Lindsay returns to the house after him because it was close enough that i thought they came together but then i was like oh that's weird and then we find out what actually happened we'll save that for later i'm gonna save my I'm going to be very careful with how I rant about this one because I don't want it to just be me yelling. Uh, this is a this one really hits home. This one's really personal for me. This is genuinely hard for me to watch. Yeah. It was tough last week watching it this week and watching Carl get more affected by it really fucking punched me in the stomach. So I'm going to try to do this as eloquently as possible, but I'm going to save it for later. Let's jump right in. And we start out, and we got to call it out. I'm going to call it out all season. West and Sierra, they're driving up together. They just vibe. They're vibing. Now, what's going to irk me a little bit? And I wonder if you caught this too. So West gets excited and just kind of like spills the tea a little bit. But it's not in a braggy way, and this comes into play later as well. Sierra, and I'm just jumping around with the other stuff because let's be honest, we're all here to talk about Lindsay and Carl. Yeah. But Sierra, and she alluded to it earlier this season, talks about how you know, her method has not been working. She usually dates older guys, right? The fact that she gets to the point where she's like, I'm pretty much not into it anymore because he just was excited and said that we made out. I feel like that's really limiting. It's it's limiting, especially given what we've seen from this house over the years. That's they all share saying. everything, and eventually everybody's going to know exactly what happened, not to mention the whole thing was filmed. So I don't really understand that part of it. That's a really good point. And I also do think that she's, I want to say she's overreacting a little bit just because people are asking West questions. Do you want him to say, oh, no, I'm a gentleman. Like, I don't kiss and tell. No, that's not his personality. The reason that you like him in the first place is for his personality. Let the guy be the guy. And if it does eventually irk you, you bring it up with him and say, hey, I don't want you to tell him. It's not a big deal. You guys made out. You told the girls that you guys made out. You actually went into detail about the makeout. I know, it's confusing. But he's not allowed to tell everybody else that you guys kissed? But he didn't. That's the funny thing. When they made out at the actual summer house, he's not the one that said anything. Somebody nope. brought it up, heard you guys are making out, and he actually kind of lightened it. He's like, no, no, you just had fun. Like, we, we hung out for like four hours. 
We just talked. Yeah, he yeah. he's not the one driving it. And the other thing that I'll give him credit for is when he does bring it up, it's not like creepy dude, like, yeah, dude, we hooked up last night. It's just much more like no. excited golden retriever, like, yeah, we kissed. It was awesome. I'm so excited. She's great. That is a really good way to put it. He is a big golden retriever. <laughs> That's what he is. He's going after it like that way. I don't really think it's that big of a deal. I don't think that Sierra is really going to make it that big of a deal either. I, I think, think that so she was either. saying it in jest when she was talking to Amanda when they were... At the, what do you even call that? A yacht club? A winery? I, don't, sure. I couldn't figure out what it was. There was boats a, and wine. So. A yachtery. Uh, yeah. That's what they call it. A yachtery. Yeah. I, I like that I one a lot. for fancy folk, all right? Yeah. They say yatteries all the time. I like that one a lot. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think it's really going to be that big of an issue. And and look, I mean, if we find out when we talk to West on Wednesday that they kind of fell apart and you know they, they see each other as friends now, then that's entirely fine because summer flings are what make this show good. Summer loving. Summer loving. Have me a blast. As long as it's not annoying. Sometimes the couples get really annoying. But for this, these I'm into two, it. That's why I'm rooting for them so much. I don't see these two getting annoying. No, neither do I. And as famous last words. Yeah. But. Because they're keeping it light and fun. Yeah, we like Give that. me the heavy shit. Yeah, we don't need heavy shit. There's enough of that in the house. There's, there's plenty of it. And speaking of, we get Lindsay and Carl, a quick scene with them. And the only reason I'm bringing this up is just to point out when they are sober. Okay? Not they. When Lindsay is sober. In this moment, she's still irritated with them. So this, there's a lot more going on behind the scenes here. And... While I'm going to vilify Lindsay for the majority of this, like we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. Clearly, there's just a disconnection between these two, and it's important to note that it's not only when she's drunk. They're just not vibing, all right? But moving on from there, we get everyone just talking about the previous events. We got the dudes. We got Carl, West, and Jesse, and they're talking about Sierra's date, and it was hysterical to watch this poor man wipe his face with bar napkins for like 30 minutes. Yeah. I mean, it's it's like mid-July in New York. Some of those old buildings don't no, have air yeah. conditioning. Yeah, dude. It's I mean, look, he was probably nervous as hell too because that's just the energy that he gives me. It's on a first date. He's a little nervous, so he's sweating a tiny bit and yeah, it's hot as hell. Well, so that's, that's it sucks, but his nips were out. Nips are out, but like the other thing is once you start it's game oh, yeah. over. Then it's just like, then you're, then you're panic sweating, and then it's just like, I hope she doesn't notice I'm sweating, and now I'm wiping my face with a bar napkin. But So she's going to notice. <laughs> but the dudes and the ladies are both talking about this simultaneously. The general consensus is everyone stands this relationship. Everybody's happy. Everyone's cool with it. Uh-huh. And I love when this show is one of the better shows as far as watchability when the house is getting along. Oh, yeah. It's so easy to watch. Yeah, and that's what we need more of, actually, which is really funny. Quick little side note here. When I finished this episode, do you know what started right after that I completely forgot about? What? Real Girlfriends of Paris. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like that I show. I forgot all about that That was a show. good show. It was good. It was light. It was fun. Do I think that they needed to make some changes? Sure, but it was two years ago. I didn't realize how long ago it was. Wow. I was like, wait a minute. Hold on. I don't know what the hell's going on here. I forgot all about this show. Yeah, it, it was two years ago. And we haven't heard a peep since. I feel but like Bravo fans missed out on that one. They probably did, and the viewership wasn't that great on it, but that's what we're talking about the Summer House here. With all the other shows going on and everything's so heavy, or we're focused on one main thing and we don't get answers, Kyle, between all of those things, like we need these shows sometimes to be a little light and airy and fun. Well, especially this one. Especially because... this one. But it's, uh, obviously we're not going to get that. Nope. But if we can get like 60% of the episode is fun and them having a good time with each other, and then 40% is Lindsay and Carl, and then you know a little bit of Amanda and Kyle somewhere in there, I'm okay with that. That's a good balance for me. I am too, as long as we get away from the accusing people of doing drugs thing, yeah. then I'll be cool. But until then, I'm going to have a lot of uh, umbrage. I'm going to take a lot of umbrage. Take with a lot show. of umbrage. But we get to Kyle and Carl, and they sit down. And Carl starts to talk about the Amanda drama. And, you know, they've been at it a little bit back and forth. And Kyle points out what we're all watching. He's like, you know what? Thanks to you and Lindsay being such a disaster, we're actually kind of okay now. Yeah. We didn't even have to have a big, like, sit down and figure it out. I think we both looked at each other and went, wow, it could be a lot worse. I love you. I love you, too. Let's work on this. <laughs> Puts things into perspective when you see that. Yeah, therapy via disaster relationship. But but Kyle asks what's been going on with Lindsay, and Carl brings up the sober bar, the non-alcoholic sports bar that he was talking about. And Kyle had the same sentiments that you and I did. Is the idea great? Probably not. Should Lindsay have been more open to hearing about it just to, you know, give him some support, ask some questions, seem somewhat interested? Yeah, you would think as somebody's significant other, that would be the route to go. 
And it wouldn't be that big of a deal to me if I'm not watching the other behavior. And when Carl says things like, you know, I really don't think that she pays attention or listens to what I want and what I need as far as where I'm going with this, because I've brought up multiple different things in the mental space, in the yeah. sober space. And she says not to pigeonhole yourself into one thing. It's like this dude's biggest issue for the longest time was the fact that he was apparently lazy and not good at going and pursuing things. So he's found something that he's passionate about because of his current life situation. And you would think that his partner would be more supportive of it. Yeah. And, and I thought about it and obviously we had a week to think about it too. I mean, I don't really know, and I don't want to give Lindsay any credit here just because she doesn't deserve it after what we've been watching. She, and we get this dichotomy between the two of them where she's talking about how they're essentially in COVID, where nine to five, Carl's not doing anything. She just has to be around him all the time, so she's getting sick of him. Okay, fine, whatever. I don't care about that. I do want to see what else Carl's coming up with because I could also see Carl just throwing shit at the wall. It could get like, Yeah, you know what, this... The whole let's go to the sober bar and let's do this, that could be for the show. But off the show, he could just be sitting there like, well, what do you think about this? And what do you think about this? Because knowing Carl, there's a whole laundry list of dumb, dumb business ideas that would go bankrupt in like a day. And I'm sure that's how it is. So maybe Lindsay did get fed up with that. So I don't really care about any of that. It is more so just watching the two of them where Carl's sitting there like, I kind of want to go through things like I need to figure out what I'm going to do with my life. And yeah, maybe is it not the most logical standpoint to go after something that you've never done before, like a brick and mortar restaurant? Yeah, probably not. But for Lindsay to sit there and say, I just want him out of the house. You've been engaged for like six, seven months. You've been living together for less than a year and you're already feeling like that. That's not supposed to and happen. You're saying that on camera for everybody to see. Like right. that's that's really tough to watch. Yeah, it's just they're they're not on the same page whatsoever and you're I'm starting to figure out why the more and more that we see but we get to dinner and I'm going to make a note of it for the rest of the season now because she feels the need to try to call out Carl for being sober so I'm going to call her out for being drunk and she's drunk in this scene and if you pay attention to Lindsay and like here's the the superpower of sober people or a lot of sober people at least myself I can pick up when people are buzzed drunk you name it yeah I can pick up people that probably drink behind the scenes mm -hmm. that I know it's certain things you get very in tune with it I, I've told you before like when we watch a show and they're at a dinner or something there's beer or anything on the table I immediately see what people are drinking did they finish their drink is it whiskey is it beer is it wine and I call I point it out to you just like you do, yeah it's like a superpower yeah, it, it bugs the shit out of me but if you pay attention to her S's, that's the first thing for her to go it gets a little slurry and a really good word to tell if somebody's drunk is martini, because if you're sober, the artini flows very easily. It's a martini. When you get drunk, you drag it. You go martini. If you pay attention to how she, I'm telling you, pay attention. Really? Watch. Go back and watch. I'm gonna have to go back and watch that because I did not notice. Listen that at all. to the RTI. And you're talking about when they're at dinner and she's ordering. Yeah. Okay. And she's ordering a martini, so she's already been drinking. And Carl points this out later that you know she comes back from Barry's boot camp and has three glasses of rosé, which we get film footage of later on. So it. This is all building up to my point later, but she gives a toast and is applauding the camaraderie of the group, which is laughable because she hasn't been involved in any of it. It's the rest of the group vibing and her trying to like shoehorn herself in. Let's not forget your performance last weekend was miserable. No one was excited for you guys to come back. They were actually dreading you guys coming back because night one, this was a super fun house with no drama. Yeah. Enter Carl and Lindsay. Shit got shitty. I thought that honestly, when she started off this speech, she was going to thank them for maybe giving her and Carl a little bit of space to figure things out or for putting up with what they've been doing or taking some accountability. Taking accountability yeah. would have been a nice thing to do. No, she's completely delusional and says, thank you for their camaraderie. I feel like everybody's having a great time here. Yeah. They are. They are. And maybe in your own Delulu land, you're having a good time. I don't know why, but you're drunk right now, so you're having a good time. And it comes on the heels of her talking about, which I actually kind of went back and forth on this one, when I think it was Jesse that pointed out, oh, yeah, you should hear Carl's bark. And she said, I would give him back the ring right away. And I'm like, you know, in a healthy relationship, that could be seen as a joke. But this is not This is not a healthy place. relationship. No. It, time or place doesn't really matter. For her specifically, yes. That did not land at all. It didn't land at the all. The whole table's like, oh, God, dude. Well, it's not 
coming from a place of she's trying to poke and jab a little bit and be funny. It's coming from a place of I'm so fucking sick of this guy. Everything he's doing is pissing me off, so I'm going to bring everything up, yeah. throw him under the bus, embarrass him in front of everybody else here. Because even the way she says it, it's not like, oh, God, like please don't let me hear that bark. Like I'll give the ring back. It was very much like he's an asshole. If he barks, like I don't want to hear it. It's going to give me the ick. And to your point earlier, and I understand that they're planning a wedding. Shit gets stressful. It gets hectic. I'm sure Carl not having a job is adding to some of that stress. Sure. But somebody points it out later. Like, yeah, that's a thing. I think as Amanda, like, it's a thing to be at each other's throats, like, leading up to the wedding. This feels different. And anybody watching it and hearing what's happening, it does. It feels different. It doesn't, it, nothing's Even right. Even if we didn't know what happened at the end of the summer, we'd be like, oh, this is, may, hopefully they break it off. Yeah, because this is not healthy. It's not like a, hopefully they go to therapy and figure it out. It's a hopefully they break it off. Yes. Yeah. Because it just, it seems unhealthy. It's unhealthy to watch. It's unhealthy for both of them. But we do get to finally address Jesse hitting on Paige. And I feel like we saw that side of Jesse that we have talked about. Yeah. Because he does seem to be a deeper person than the guy that came on the show in his intro and said, I love going after taking chicks because you know they're good yeah. because they're taken. <laughs> yeah. He completely rebrands himself here because they check him and say, you know, you've been flirting with Paige. Craig's coming next week. Like, it's not the move. He's like, no, I didn't. It was all above level. And someone points out that they touched her leg. Cut to the confessional. And he's like, come on, man. Like, I would never go after a taken woman. Like, that's not right. Like, pump the brakes. It's like, you said it. Dude. Yeah, you said, you said it, said dude. It. We, we know you said it. And look, I mean, it's your first season, so you maybe you forgot that you said it in a different confessional because it's clearly just, a different one. But it's just tough to watch you do that and completely turn around. I will, however, thank the rest of the cast for not making it a huge deal. Now, look, yes, if Paige felt super uncomfortable, then that's one thing. And if she conveyed that to, say, Sierra or she conveyed it to Amanda and they want to stand up for her, that's great. But clearly she didn't do any of that because they weren't super serious about the whole thing. They were still making jokes, but they were like, dude, like, just admit it. You did. We know you've been hitting on her. Let's not do that anymore. No, no. And hopefully this is the end of it. That would be great because, I again, I do think that Jesse has a lot of potential. And, again, you know, it's two bros sitting on a couch here talking about this. But we want the dudes to be vibing in this because it really is a driving factor on this show. And if everybody's in cahoots with each other and having a good time, I'm in. And we're in cahoots, too. We're in cahoots, too. We want a cahoot. But this is when we get back to the house. This is when shit starts to pop off. And like I said in the beginning of the episode, Carl walks in first and shuts the door. Says hi to Amanda. Goes about his business. Lindsay comes in afterwards, clearly inebriated, goes upstairs, and she's like, hey, can you unzip me, please? Carl's like, no, I can't. I'm like, fuck, something happened again. Mm -hmm. And they start to get into it, and she fucking accused him of doing drugs again. Again, and I'm not getting into it yet, because we're going to get into it later when they talk. But I was shocked. I don't know why. Like, I knew this was going to happen again. I saw clips of it happening again. It's just hearing those words come out of her mouth and then she denies it and then she tries to flip it over to well you smoke weed don't you and let me clear this up real quick there's a lot of people have actually asked us this question because i am sober so cali sober is technically a thing not everybody recognizes it as being fully sober but the important thing for me and for the people that I've talked to on the matter and in regards to sobriety in general, the number one thing that you need to stay away from are the things that are your vices. So for me, it's alcohol. I never did drugs. Didn't have to worry about that one. Never going to do drugs. So it's not a problem. Thank God. My big issue is alcohol. So do I dabble with an edible here and there? I do. Everything in my life is under control. It's manageable. I have never had a moment where I started to panic or feel like, oh shit, I'm losing control. That's the biggest thing to take away from what being sober is. It's not so much the substance itself. It's more so what does that substance do to your life? Can you drink safely? If you can't, do not do that. If you can smoke a little bit of weed and it does not affect you, and you are honest about it, open about it, communicative with the people around you, your support system, and it does not affect your life, that is not relapse. It's not at all. And it's so fucking bizarre to me that your support system, Lindsay, wants to try to out you as though you are doing drugs again. And not just in regards to like, oh, you're using it, but to try to prove a point with an actual substance, 
weed in that moment on TV. What the fuck are you doing? Are you trying to ruin this man? I don't know what she was trying to do. I think I, it would be crazy for us to think that we know what she was trying to do. Because I, I, we can't even put ourselves in that kind of mindset. I feel like maybe she was backtracking a little bit instead of just she like, was with the we know thing. what you were implying immediately. You were implying and you said it five times last weekend to Gabby. You said it to Amanda. You said it to other people. Like you kept saying cocaine, Carl. You're implying cocaine. You were implying that he was doing cocaine. That's exactly what you were doing last week. You're doing it again, but I think you realize that you're doing it again. And instead, you're backtracking because you feel like you can gaslight him into saying, well, you're getting so upset about this. I'm just talking about you smoking weed. Did you smoke weed tonight? It's not what you were saying. No. We all know that's not what you were doing. We all know that's not what you were saying. And again, Carl, look, he, he doesn't get as frustrated as I feel like he should, especially this second straight weekend. And maybe he does a little bit later, but that's when he's able to have like a daytime conversation with her. At night, he yeah, he's going to get frustrated and he's going to sleep in a different room and he's going to do this and that and whatever. But he's still not blowing up at her, which is crazy because that's what she's accusing him of doing. I know. He's accusing him of yelling at her in the car and talking about this and that. He wants to go home. It's 1130. He doesn't drink. He's out there. It was a long day. You guys traveled up there. I know he doesn't work, but he traveled to the Hamptons and he went out and he had a nice dinner. The, the guy wants to go home. You offered to go home with him. Right. You don't get the right to get in the car and say, what's up? I feel like you're weird. Why are you going home? You should know why he's going home. He's going home because the night's about to get crazy. People are going to start drinking a lot. And he doesn't really want to be around it. Because, again, he's been around it so much. And he's still struggling with his sobriety. And you're not helping. That's the biggest issue. That is She's just one. never going to see that. She's never going to take accountability, as we see later. Even when she has a prime opportunity to just say sorry, she's not going to do it. And she's spinning the narrative. And for her to yell at him and say that he's gaslighting her is crazy. It's Because bananas. I've never seen that. This is the most meta thing ever. She is gaslighting him by saying that he's gaslighting her. Yeah. How does that work? It's gasception. I, it, that's beyond that she's a fucking like professor of gaslighting it's insane and like the root of it is that she doesn't like carl questioning her drinking and we get that later and we're going to talk about it later but that's the root of it it pisses her off so she feels the need to go back at him well if you can say it to me i can say it to you no it's wildly different it is wildly wildly why did you different. just stay out like why did you have to go back with that's it? the that's other you're thing. gonna do you could stay out and then get home and we see kyle do it every time with amanda Kyle's still out there. He comes home to Amanda. He's drunk. He gets in bed, goes to sleep. Carl, if you're not going to yell at him and like get mad at him for stupid shit while you're drunk, he's probably going to let He'll you be go. sleeping like a and baby. And in the morning, you might have a conversation about it. Maybe he's concerned about how much you're drinking, but it's not going to be as heavy as it is now because you're doing this to yourself. Yeah, and she buries herself more and more. She goes, you're the biggest gaslighter. You're Tom Sandoval. It's like, bro. Uh, yeah, usually we like a crossover episode. Not there. Shout out BoJack Horseman, but no. <laughs> Mr. Peanut Butter, we love a crossover. But no, not here, not there. Keep Sandoval away from us. We, we already no have sense. to deal with him once a week. I don't want any more. And the other thing is, like, she keeps saying, like, you're yelling, you're this, you're that. And you know exactly what she's doing. She's trying to spin it. Like you said, if this is Carl upset, he's calm as shit. Yeah. He's calm as shit. He's reacting. You're being an asshole. He's reacting to you. But... We've also seen Carl mad. Yeah, this In isn't the it. Past. This is not it. It's not even close, but... Lindsay storms out of the room and she finds Amanda and she's like, he's a fucking terrorist. He's a fucking terrorist. And that you guys don't see, I'm the only person in the world that's seen this bad side of Carl. It's all smoke and mirrors. And if you're going to accuse me of drinking, you better be clean. Like what the fuck? And why do you think like this whole house, the entire house for seasons has been against you. You've done no favors for yourself in this regard. But the whole house has an issue with you. Why are you going to everybody in the house that's cool with Carl, by the way, because Carl's nice. You're going to all of them and telling them again that he's doing drugs. And then when they question you about it, you fucking lie again. Mm -hmm. And we're all watching it on camera. So that's where it just baffles me. But let's keep going. I don't want to do it too soon. The gang comes home and they see that they're all sleeping in separate beds. I was proud of Danielle. I was proud when she I've, walked out. I've been out proud the door. of Danielle so far this she's season. She's had a good season. Well, like, she hasn't done anything, but she's. I'm proud that she's staying out of it. She is, and she she makes the actual move to leave the house. She's. I'm not getting involved. It's, I I thought it was funny. She's like, I could fix it. Pretty much is what she says. Yeah. Like I could get involved and like help this situation, but I'm not going to. I don't think anybody would help the situation. And kudos to you for 
But the night wraps up with West and Sierra smooching, you know, and he apparently makes out with his eyes open, which, hey, I he, thought it was funny, their own. Dude, it's good. funny. It's good. They vibe. They're vibing. They do, that's yeah. why I, and I'm probably hypersensitive to the, like, the Sierra comment because I want these two to work out so well, much. It's, and that's the funny thing is when you think about who Sierra has been hooking up with in the last couple of years, start off with Luke, absolute weirdo. We mm-hmm. can admit that. And sometimes I like him, sometimes I don't. But he's an absolute weirdo. He doesn't have that like disarming humor about him. Austin, same thing. He hooks up with girls. It ends up blowing up. It's a whole fucking thing. And then he just doesn't take accountability for it. It doesn't seem that fun. The first two guys, not that fun. A lot yeah. of weird shit going on there. Yeah. West, funny guy. He, seems like he's a lot of fun. He's just a dude. We're not hyping up the interview or anything, but... Seems like a good dude. He seems like a good I'm dude. He's just one of the bros. Like yeah. I think that's why we we uh, resonate with him so yeah. well. But regardless, we get to the next morning and we get a confession with Carl. Wait, and do you do you make out with your eyes open sometimes? No, Dev actually asked me I feel one like time. I, do. I thought about it immediately. I was like, oh, Shit, you an eye open guy? I think so. Yeah. Dev asked me one time, and she said, "Just try it once." Not that she does either, but I. <laughs> what? Well, not Wait, even after like the that. show. No, 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 no. No, this is a. Isn't that weird? It was yeah, like what? it was this like a great. year ago. She brought it up randomly. Like it wasn't even like a sensual moment. It was just more like, "Hey, do you ever do that?" And I'm like, "No." She's like, "Really?" And I was like, "No." And then it got brought up on this. I was like, "Oh, that's weird." <laughs> that's really funny. Yeah, I th- it's so funny because it immediately like I started thinking about. It. I'm like, "Oh shit, do I do that?" That's creepy. Why? I, I'll have to find out. Do you want to see their eyes? Like, what the fuck? I don't know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to think about it any more than I have to. I just need to get to the bottom of it. I do too now. That's that's weird. I don't I don't condone I'll let that. You know. I don't condone that behavior. But Jesse and Carl have a conversation outside, and Jesse is the best person right now to comment on this because he's brand new. He doesn't know Lindsay. And he's seeing this from a third party perspective entirely. And he's like, is she always like this? And Carl like, yeah, pretty much. And he's like, oh, so just flat out, I guess it's what you signed up for. <laughs> it's like, damn. Great. I was like, that's not, he's not wrong. Yeah. He's not wrong, but. But it does get you thinking, like, Carl did know what he was getting into. To he's... a certain extent, but that's the other part of this that's so important. And in... I think to, maybe not to this extent, but I think he knew Oh yeah, no, what she absolutely. is. Absolutely, and I think that there was a big part of him that hoped, as he says in the show, that they would grow together, yeah. she would leave some of that behind. The funniest part of this whole thing is, it's not, not funny, ha-ha, but as Carl's alluding to her not being able to control her drinking in the confessional, she drinks, she gets aggressive, she gets loud, rude, obnoxious, all of those things. When they were at their quote unquote best, the babe summer, Mm -hmm. she was sober. And I'm not saying that she needs or that Carl needs to be with somebody that is strictly sober. I'm saying there's a difference between drinking and having a drinking problem. I'm not calling Lindsay an alcoholic. I would never label anybody that. She absolutely has a drinking problem because every time she gets drunk, this is the result. And right. that's when you start to point to unsafe drinking is when repeat behavior happens and it's not good behavior. That's a fucking problem. So watching all of this happen and hearing Carl say, yeah, like, you know, everything's fine until this happens, which I don't believe that's true. I think this is a constant issue between the two of them. I think, I think it dr- gets way worse when this happens, yes, but I, it's not, you know, fine. I think the drinking exacerbates it for sure. But if you look back once again. When they were at their best and Lindsay was seemingly, quote unquote, at her best, or at least seemed the most together, she was sober. Yeah. So that's a big, big factor here to point out. And I wonder if they're going to address that at all. And I hope they do. But we get a conversation between Amanda and Lindsay and just recapping her side of the story. What happened? Well, we were in the car and Carl was questioning my drinking. And so I think it's pretty hypocritical if I can't question his sobriety. Not the same thing at all. Yeah, no. Not the same thing at all. But thank God Amanda brings up the fact that, Lindsay, you are the one that keeps bringing up the drugs. You keep bringing it up. She's like, well, it's weed. I was talking about weed. Oh, that's really, really convenient at this point because even you know you're being an asshole about this whole thing. Or maybe you have no idea you're being an asshole, but all the people asking you about the drug thing, it's starting to land a little bit that you're going a little bit too far. By the way, not one person ever has said, what are you on? And is referring to weed. No. Nobody says that. That's not how people talk. No. No. What, uh, you, yeah, the, did you, you smoke a reefer this. cigarette? Yeah. Like, what Even we... that is not as bad as what are you on? What are you on implies drugs. Yes. Drugs implies hard drugs. Cocaine, pills, 
not going to keep listing them, but you get the gist. You know drugs. <laughs> you just keep listing them. <laughs> you want me to? <laughs> no. But moving on from there, it is nice to hear Amanda give Kyle props for being a good husband this weekend. And we like to see when they're doing well, the house tends to do well. I'd so agree with that, yeah. we always root for them to figure this out. And yes, it's been a pretty wild relationship between the two of them. A lot of ups and downs, some very, very low downs. But they've bounced back from that. So hopefully they can continue this, get better communicating. But the dudes start to talk about Lindsay. And Carl gives his side of the story. It's exactly what I would picture actually happened in the car. He said simply, I wanted to leave. Then she questioned why. What are you on? Let me give a PSA to everybody out there. For those of us that don't drink, that do go out, such as myself and Shooter can attest to this, you guys get your second wind with booze. Yep. I missed the second wind. There's sugar in booze, apparently. I don't get that. So I hit it like 11, 30, 12. It's not even so much like they're... There's definitely a time and place where if it's going to get crazy, I'm like, I don't want to deal with this shit. I'll bounce. 99% of the time, I'm like, I don't have the second wind. Love you guys. I got to go home. I, I just don't have it in me tonight. And that's a big factor in this whole thing. So for her to then equate that to being on something, whatever. But looking at Carl talk about it with the guys and say, I'm going to cry if I'm talking about this, is gut-wrenching to me because that should be the last thing on his mind is trying to defend himself to his fiance. that's fucking insane and then he has the nerve to say maybe i'm being super sensitive to her drinking to the situation all of that no dude yeah but that's he's almost taking the entire brunt of the accountability not for almost he is yeah like he's He's so twisted up because she's not taking any accountability that now he's starting to question his own role in it. He's like, maybe I am being sensitive about all of this. And she is right because she is so stuck in her own ways and refuses to say, yeah, things got out of hand last night. I'm sorry that I said those things because she's completely going the opposite direction with this and explaining away all the things that she was feeling and gaslighting him, which, by the way, is very, very funny in itself. That a really, really drunk person is trying to tell the sober guy what they said last night. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make any sense. Makes no, no, it doesn't zero. make any sense. Zero sense. And in Lindsay's mind, it makes complete sense, which tells you everything that you need to know about her state of mind and how she feels about this. 100%. And, you know, this takes us pretty much to the end of the episode where everybody's at the, was it Fish Yattery. Bone? Bowfish. Yottery? Yottery. The Yottery Club. The Yottery Club. They're at the Yottery Club. And leading up to that, we get a couple of conversations. You know, Gabby was involved with Jesse, and they're talking about the drug thing. They're talking about Lindsay bringing it up again, and Jesse's like, dude, this is so fucked. Like, this is really fucked up, but I feel like not enough people are saying that in this house. And I also think it's weird that nobody has stood up and said to Lindsay, yo, knock this shit off. Like, Especially after what Carl said in the pool. Yeah. Like you would imagine, and I get it, like Kyle is playing devil's advocate a little bit and trying to hear both sides because he wants to keep and maintain a friendship or at least try to salvage something going on here moving forward in the summer so that things don't blow up entirely. So I, I guess you can excuse Kyle a little bit there because he is still taking Carl's side in that conversation. Nobody else is stepping up and saying what the fuck. And the only thing I can think of, and this could be the reason behind it, they all know how that conversation is going to go. They do. So what's the point? It's going to make Carl's life worse by them trying to check Lindsay. Yeah, because now then it's been it. Then it's going to be, oh, you're telling everybody in the house what I said, and you're changing yeah. my words, and yeah. you're making it. Yeah, you're making me out to be the villain again. Here we go with another summer of this. Yeah, okay, all right, I can see it too. Yeah, I think that that's probably yep. why. But we get a quick, quick, quick happy note with Kyle and Amanda, and again, Lindsay and Carl are making them appreciate each other, which is great. They have the communication conversation about getting better at just talking to one another because they do want the same things. They do vibe with each other. It all makes sense. It's just getting lost in translation. And whether that's one of them not being able to accept who the other person is, vice versa, who the fuck knows. But Kyle takes it all the way to let's go back to couples therapy. And Amanda says no initially, but then says, I'm PMSing. Ask me on another day. I'll probably say yes. So progress. 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 We like progress. We like progress. And then we get this fucking scene. And my God, it was emotional for me. I was angry. I was sad more than anything. And we get a convo between Lindsay and Carl. 
Carl has to approach Lindsay because she can't get out of her own way to go and say, hey, man, I'm so sorry. So Carl approaches her. Lindsay's the one that says, shall we go talk over there? They go over the night. Lindsay leads it off with, I did not accuse you of doing drugs. She said, you just shut down at the bar. And Carl said, I had a change of heart. I didn't want to go out anymore. You said you wanted to come home with me the minute we get in the car. You have to question me. Why did you want to leave? What's going on with you? You're acting weird. What do you want? All that stupid shit simply because he changed his mind. And she goes, why are you being so aggressive? And then starts gaslighting. And this is literally textbook gaslighting. Yeah. Trying to make someone feel like they're being crazy when they're not. Carl's reacting to you being a dick. That's what's happening. And he's right. not even... He could be escalating this so much more. And he's not. He's trying so hard to stay composed. And you are trying so hard to poke the fucking bear. And Carl just, once again, here's what happened. And then tries to even say, by the way, there's what happened, my experience, and was going to say your experience, and she cuts him off. Mm -hmm. He's still trying to play devil's advocate here because that's who Carl is. And she goes, here we go. Here we go. You're trying to change the narrative, trying to change the narrative, make me seem like I was the crazy one, I was the aggressive one. Because you cannot say that you were not aggressive when you were asking him, what do you want? When you're stomping down the stairs going after Amanda and saying he's a fucking terrorist. You're escalating. He's trying to go to bed. He's trying to separate and have a conversation the next day as he tried to do last weekend. He's trying to be as pragmatic and calm about this as humanly possible. And Lindsay is trying to do everything in her power to derail that. And it is sickening to watch. But I am glad that Carl got a little bit more amped up and, and finally flat out says, like, you just need to take some responsibility. Like, take a little bit of accountability. And she can't. She goes... It's okay for you to ask how many drinks I've had, but I can't ask if you smoked weed. And she gets all pissed off about the Uber, and he has to point out that it's a lift. I loved that moment. That was actually really funny. But he says to her, can you understand how this is hurtful to me? Can you just, can you say that much? Do you get why accusing me of being on drugs is really fucking mean? If you can lower your tone. If you can lower your tone, I can say that. So and, and you know what? Frustrating. You're not ready for a conversation. Now I'm going to patronize you. You're not ready for a conversation. So I'm going to go over here because you're too angry. You're so angry. Oh, I got angry. Yeah. I got angry. And that's absolutely insane for her to say that too. And that's that just goes to show you that Carl is giving her every little opportunity to do anything right. If she said in that moment, yes, I can understand why that's hard for you. But I was talking about weed and double down on the weed thing for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Carl would see that as a win. Carl would look at that and say, you know what? She at least acknowledged my feelings in some capacity. Mm -hmm. That's all he's looking for at all. Just a little bit of leeway in there somewhere. And she's not giving it to him at all. Not even remotely. She's gaslighting him even more, making it out like he's the one who's now arguing. What do you want from him? Like, you accuse him of raising his voice when he's actually calm in the bedroom. You accuse him of getting angry with you when he's not raising his voice. He finally raises his voice, and now this is what you're coming back with? You're being too loud? It's insane. Like, what do you expect from him? I don't know. And also, she does that stupid fucking smirk too the whole time. It's like, what are you, what are you getting off on this? I don't know. I truly don't know. I think that she likes to have this false feeling of power that she's in I'm charge. I'm starting of to understand argument. why she feels like she was blindsided. I guess she's so. Fucking delusional. She's Delulu. She's queen of Delulu land. But I'm glad that Kyle in this moment tells her like you were wildly irrational last weekend. So I'm only assuming that's what happened this weekend. But more so, I'm much, much happier to see that Carl was on the dock with Amanda and Jesse, and they just calmly tell him, like, hey, we've been on the other side of this, too. We're on your team. Mm -hmm. And, like, for Carl to know that he has support in this situation is so fucking important because the one person that he needs to lean on more than anybody else in this world, he cannot right now. And it ends with Lindsay and Gabby having a conversation back at the house she, Lindsay's now like, why can't we just figure out how to communicate? Because you're making it impossible. And Carl comes into the room and he fucking apologizes. Yep. He says, I'm sorry, Lindsay, because he's grasping at straws. He's trying to do anything he can to fix anything, whatever's salvageable. He's doing everything he can. It's not his job. He's not he's the at one least that's happy that she's showing emotion at that point, even though I was very confused by the emotion. I, it you didn't no do this sense. the whole time. If you cried at least a couple times before this, maybe we would have an understanding of where you are emotionally with this whole thing. I don't think that she's upset. I think she's now starting to realize everybody's turning against her, rightfully so. And you've got Gabby in there who's just trying to debrief. 
But you watched as you're talking to Kyle. Kyle's taking Carl's side. You call him out for that, and you're smirking again, which fucking pisses me off. And you're looking over at Carl. He's getting calmed down by other friends in the house that are seeing his side of things. And I think she's slowly realizing that everybody else is turning against her and knows what she's doing. And that's when she breaks down. That's why she's crying. She's not crying because her and Carl can't communicate. The reason you guys can't communicate is because of you, you dumb fucking bonehead. Mm-hmm. Big idiot. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna get shit for that. Yeah, I can't call anybody idiots. Okay, they this call one every... absolutely deserves to be called an idiot. One hundred percent. A lot more than that, and I'm gonna hold my tongue on those things. No, that's why she's crying. She's crying for her own selfish reasons, not because of the relationship, not because she hurt Carl, not because they can't find a way to communicate. It's all because now she's realizing you're being vilified for the right reasons. Correct. And then she has the balls to say, it's always on me, and no one takes the time to understand what it's like to be constantly judged. You're putting yourself in these positions. Yeah. You're doing it to yourself. They're judging you based on your actions. That is what happens when you're an asshole. Which is very ironic that you're saying the sober guy is not getting judged. It's hysterical. Yeah, he's the one who's trying to go out and have fun. And leaves early because he's tired, and you're judging him for why he's leaving. You're not judging him, you're accusing him. Of you're doing accusing drugs. him of doing drugs, which yeah. Now you're the one who's getting judged. Yeah. For what your actions? I don't. Wow. How about that? What a world. What getting a world. Judged for your actions. But who knew? It's fucking crazy, man. But here, here we go. And I've been saving it for this because I wanted to get all of my thoughts out to help me articulate this as well as I can. I'm gonna try to do this without getting too emotional. But this, like I said, this one really fucked me up. And the biggest thing here is like by accusing Carl of using again, one, you don't know how belittling that is, like how small you can make a person who has changed their entire life, their whole entire life to try to be sober, which is not an easy thing to do. But two, you're not getting the dangers of it. And that's where it really fucks me up because the dangers of this, especially with somebody that's newly sober, somebody that's fragile in sobriety, by saying things like, your old Carl, here comes cocaine Carl again, what you're doing is you're putting ideas in his head that maybe his behavior is reminiscent of what it was before. And for anybody that has gone through active addiction, who is now currently sober or anywhere along this journey, the first step to a relapse usually is repeat behavior. You start doing similar things and living a similar life that you used to, and you're one step away from using again. And this all seems to be stemming from the fact that you're self-conscious about your own drinking right now when you're with a sober partner because he asks you how much you've had to drink when you get too drunk and start yelling at him. But by questioning sobriety over and over again, you're risking pushing him or anybody that's sober over the edge. And that comment of, if she wants to see the old Carl, I'll drink 15 Lover Boys and burn this fucking house down. You don't know how close we all are to that. Mm-hmm. And nobody that hasn't gone through it will ever understand. Myself, five years sober, I am one bad day, one bad decision, one moment of weakness away from relapsing. And that is for the rest of my fucking life. I live with that every fucking day. And I work my fucking ass off every day to stay sober. I surround myself with the right people. I make the right decisions. and I do the right things so that I can be the best father brother, husband, son that I can for the people around me. And I use those people around me to keep me sober and to keep moving forward. And Carl has done a fucking great, great job of that. And by putting this shit in his head, if you make him think that he's old Carl, if you push him to the point where he wants to prove a fucking point, because we all have that in us as an active sober person, I have it in me to say, fuck you, watch this. Give me a fucking reason. And you're trying to push him to this point where he's going to give you a reason. And then I feel like she's going to be vindicated where she's like, see, I told you guys, this is exactly what was going on. And the craziest thing about all of this is this is supposed to be your number one support system. This is supposed to be the person that you can lean on at any point when you're at your absolute lowest. I thank God every day for Dev and the support that she's provided me throughout this entire thing because I don't know how strong I would be without it. And to see somebody trying to repair a relationship because Lindsay can't get out of her own fucking way to support her fiance who is sober, who is working so hard, who has been very open and honest about his struggles with staying sober. And put on top of that, you're accusing this guy of doing drugs and drugs killed his fucking brother. They took his brother away from him, and you're going to accuse him of relapsing. There's so much more weight to this than you being a drunk, pissed-off teenager and throwing insults out there because it serves you in that moment because you're self-conscious about your own drinking habits because you can't control yourself and handle your fucking alcohol. 
and I don't wish it on anybody, and I don't even wish it on Lindsay, but you have no fucking clue what it's like every day to live with the guilt and the shame of the awful things that you've done, of the people that you've hurt, and you have to look yourself in the fucking mirror and come to terms with all of that and be open about it and be honest about it and accept it that that's who you were, that's a part of you, that is not who you are anymore, and you always have to live with that. I have shit every single day that reminds me of something fucking dumb that I've done. And I will live with that forever. And I'm okay with that because I've done what I've needed to do to get to this point in my life. And Carl is doing what he needs to do to get to that point in his life. And you are going to derail the whole fucking thing because you're a selfish, immature, drunk. You like That's all I can say about this. And the biggest thing is like, why? Why? So you can feel better about yourself? Is that the goal here? You're going to put all this shit out there, so now people are going to start talking, by the way. Now there's rumors rumbling about because you just needed to be right. And how's that working for you? Because you just got fucking dumped. And thank God, by the way. And it, it really, like, there's certain moments, and, like, I know this is Bravo and it's reality TV, haha, whatever, but, like, fuck me, dude. When I tell you that I had a pit in my stomach, I still do because I felt this one. And, like, I've gone through this shit. And it's not fair that somebody that's doing the right things needs to be put in a position where he can fail because she's a selfish fuck. That's all. That's why I wanted to save it till the end. I wanted to say There's it a lot right. of people that tuned in for this episode to hear that rant. Oh, fuck, man. It, like, I, I can't imagine. Like, And like, so much credit to him for staying sober. Like, yeah. staying sober through this. Like, fuck me. Oh, well, and that's I, I said this to you before we started recording. We've noticed that there's been a huge uptick in Carl posting things. Yeah, recently. Like, he he stayed silent the whole time. We never heard his quote-unquote side of the story. We heard a lot from Lindsay. We heard a lot from Lindsay. Yep. Leading up to it, how she was blindsided, what was really going on. She never once said, you're going to watch the season and understand. No. Other people were saying, you're going to watch the season and understand Carl's side of it. We're starting to get that, and I think... You can notice that Carl is much more active now, posting things that he's doing for business and posting things with Kyle about the lover boy, non-alcoholic side stuff. He's starting to show, all right, you guys are knowing what I'm going through. Yep. And you're realizing this is fucking nuts. Yeah. And thank God that he's he's able to come up for air now. And this is why we didn't take a stance. When all this shit broke, we didn't say a fucking word about it because we didn't know. We heard Lindsay's side. We didn't hear shit from Carl. So we sat and waited and God, I'm glad we did. Yep. Because, woof, I'd hate to be on the wrong side of this one. And there's a lot of people on the wrong side of this one. Let me tell you that right now. And they're all coming back out and saying, wow, I was an idiot. I can't believe I said all those things about Carl. It's like, yep. yeah, you should have waited. But, uh, yeah, I'm emotionally drained. So let's get into some questions. And my phone is recording this for you. Oh, yeah, so, so I get to read the questions. You're the question today, master suckers. tonight. Here we go. This is a good one. Who lacks more empathy and self-awareness? Sandoval or Lindsay? <laughs> That's tough. Lindsay. <laughs> Lindsay right now, yeah. Until Sandoval does something tomorrow night, then we'll, you know. And you know what? They should date. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Um, each other's houses to the ground. Sorry, I forgot that I need to read names. Uh, that's from Allison Clune and Jay. Uh, Bridget Jay asks, we need to find the Lyft driver to get his confession. Can you find him? We'll try. <laughs> we'll try. Yeah, we'll try. You heard about the Lyft driver that took Sandoval and Ariana home, so maybe we'll find this guy. Yeah, maybe it's the same guy. He's bi-coastal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, do you think Lindsay truly thinks that Carl is on drugs or senses that the end was coming? That's from Britt Mobley. Do you think she was trying to spin it a little bit? She definitely bit? doesn't think he's on drugs. She's using that because it's an easy, low-hanging fruit. And no, I don't think that she wants to be out of this relationship either. I think that she is, I'm, I'm holding my words back here, but I think that she wants to be in control of the situation. I think that she wants the relationship to look a certain way and Carl to be a certain person. And if he doesn't fall in line, this is how she acts. Uh, Kate Fitz 7 says, do you think the producers are pissed at Lindsay for speaking to the media about the breakup so they're giving her an awful edit, making Carl look innocent slash not his fault. No. I, I mean, I think they are pissed that she was speaking in the media. I don't. I think that the fact that she did speak and Carl did not yeah. drummed up a lot more viewers for this season. Uh, all right. We'll do two more here. Uh, Valihandra. Oh, fuck. 
This is tough. I told you. It's I not know. that easy. Uh, Valihandra Deeks. Are you ready to do both March Madness and Bravo? I am. I'm going to March Madness this yeah, weekend, so, yeah, so I'll be out in Pittsburgh doing that for a bachelor party, so I'll be doing both. And last one. But uh, that's all I got. You got anything? Nah, that's weird to be on this side of it. Uh, nope. No, I don't. Oh, wait, our live shows are coming up. <laughs> don't forget, we got one in D.C. That is March, fuck, May 3rd. Union stage down in D.C., so make sure you go get them ticks. And then we got Baston, and that is June 14th. Much smaller venue. Those tickets are nearly sold out. So if you haven't gotten your tickets yet for Boston, make sure you go and do that ASAP or you're going to miss out. Other than that, I'm good. All right, good. Well, Brav Bros are out of here. Nice.